One of my favorite things about working on Bloodsport has always been experimenting with new ways of making the bot more menacing. Sometimes that means chasing bigger hits. Sometimes it means chasing a meaner look. Often, it's both. I'm Nick, Blade Specialist for Team BNS, and this is the Skeleton Key. Last time on the Blade Design series, we talked about the Chonk Key and its origins. How it came from the original key design, and the incorporated lessons we learned from the Thick Bar, and how it balanced the trade-offs between strength, stability, and kinetic energy better than the old crossbar design. As I was designing the Chonk Key, it got me thinking, what if we did the same thing with the Long Bar? The Long Bar, aka the Classic Bar, is not so easily replaced, however. Unlike the broken blades we've been trying to design for verts, the two versions of that bar have a combined eight wins to their name, including six knockouts. But it's also not without its problems. Being so long and thin, it has a tendency to bend over time. And the pointed teeth, while dishing out massive damage, have had a tendency to wear quickly. The classic bar is designed for fighting control bots and other horizontals, like this week's opponent, Rotator. So, largely bots that have reach and or a big ol' wedge. When going into a match like this, we found that our reach, rake angle, and bite depth make a big difference in the results. For example, when we ran our tri-bar against Whiplash, that lack of reach and bite really hurt us when we were just an inch or two away from cutting into their frame and drivetrain. We were kicking ourselves for not using the classic bar there, as it would have reached further, gotten more engagement depth with just two teeth instead of three, and the teeth would have peeled away a lot more material. Improving on this design means leaning even further into these strengths, while also trying to improve on the weaknesses. And so the skeleton key is born. With the same 46 inch diameter as the classic bar, it's all set in the reach department. And its asymmetric shape gives it double the bite depth, with the hope being that an opponent could advance so far into our weapon circle before we hit them that the blade would simply find the corner on its own, rather than deflecting off their front armor. Imagine this damage on Whiplash, but with the increased reach and triple the bite depth compared to the tri bar. That's the goal here. What about the rake angle then? Adding more aggressive tooth profiles works directly against durability, so how do we dial up the teeth from the classic bar without increasing wear? Well, that's where the crazy spikes come in. The original key blade had these for decoration only, but the skeleton key is fully reversible. The idea here is that when it's spinning spikes first, getting more bite also increases the rake angle. If we get enough bite on the edge of an opponent, that lip is going to get hooked and yanked outward by an extremely aggressive tooth. And just like with the chonk key, combining the stabilizer with the counterweight frees up enough mass to improve both the stability and bending strength of this blade compared to the long bar. As with all our blades, the skeleton key has a machined center bore to ensure it spins with the proper alignment and dynamic balance. This is done with the help of our awesome sponsors over at NTMA Machinist Career College in Santa Fe Springs, California. With 53 years of experience and 80,000 working alumni, NTMA offers unparalleled hands-on training and guaranteed job placement assistance that can take you from total beginner to certified entry-level machinist in just seven months. The program covers everything you need to learn the machining skills essential for making parts like the ones we use on BattleBots. Their facilities have vertical mills, lathes, CNC machines, wire EDM units, CAD computer workstations, and more. They also set you up with new laptops, school supplies, shop attire, free parking, and much more so there's no barrier to start your training. Check out their website at ntmacc.org. So after all that hype, you might be thinking, that sounds awesome, I can't wait to see this blade fight. And yeah, me too. Unfortunately, not all experiments work out. And when we got to filming this year, we discovered that the new Bloodsport isn't able to self-write with a key-shaped blade. Bloodsport 2 was able to self-write with the original key, so it was pretty heartbreaking to find out we couldn't use this bar. But that's just something that happens with an all-new bot design sometimes. There are tons and tons of variables, and you can't always account for all of them. Not to worry though, because we also brought back the classic bar, and that one can self-write. Sometimes you just can't beat the original. Anyway, it's time to get hyped in the comments for our main event fight this week against Rotator. Thanks for watching. Yeah.